Today we're going to talk about CNC 101, where we cover the bits, the geometry of the bits, the different type of bits you can use to do your CNC work, and when you might choose one bit over another bit. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days, and let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today is part three of my CNC 101 video series. And I'm gonna walk you through the bits that we use to cut our material with a CNC machine. I'm gonna walk you the geometry of the bits, the different types of bits that you can use, and maybe some specialty bits that I have in my arsenal that I use on occasion that really help out and really make things go a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get started with the geometry of a bit. The basic geometry of any bit, otherwise known as an end mill, is fairly simple and I'm gonna walk you through the different components here. So right off the bat, this is a bit or an end mill. It contains the shank. This is the part that attaches into the router and the collet closes down on it and holds it into place while you're doing your milling operation. And the other part of the bit are the flutes. This is the part of the bit that actually does the cutting when you're doing your subtractive manufacturing process. Now the number of flutes and the orientation of the flutes changes by the different bits that you have, which I will talk about in just a moment. With spiral end mills like these two here, they come in two fundamental forms. First off, an up-cut spiral end mill and a down-cut spiral end mill. And so the names imply exactly what they do. An up-cut spiral end mill, when you're cutting it, causes the chips that you're cutting to move up the flutes and be evacuated away from the cutting material. A down cut spiral end mill, on the other hand, forces the chips while you're cutting down into the material. And so that means that not as many chips are evacuated and so you end up clogging the slot that you're cutting. However, a down cut end mill has a specific advantage as it creates a really great surface finish on the surface of the material you're cutting. Now imagine with the up cut end mill, as you're cutting and the chips are coming up, it actually causes the material to spray a little bit and to flay out a little bit. And that is known as tear out when you're working with wood. And so an up cut end mill will generate a little bit of tear out on the top surface of the material that you're cutting. So if you're looking for a perfect surface finish on your material and you're using something like wood, then I would recommend a down cutting end mill. The upside of an up cutting end mill is that while you're cutting, it does cause the chips to evacuate up out of the pocket that you're cutting, which means there's less heat on the bit, which means your bit is gonna stay sharper longer. Now the downside of an up cutting end mill is that it does cause that tear out on the top, but if you need a perfect surface finish on the bottom, then an up cutting end mill is the tool for the job because it creates that perfect surface finish on the bottom. So again, there are pros and cons of the up cut and the down cut end mill and you should optimize your end mill for the type of cut you're trying to get after and the type of surface finish you're looking for for your material. So I have different bits here. This one here is a four flute end mill. This is a two flute end mill, and this is a one flute end mill. Now, I will tell you that the two flute end mill is my go-to, my general purpose bit. It is what I use for just about all of my operations. I only use the other configurations when I am cutting something special or I want to achieve a very specific outcome. The two flute spiral end mill is your go-to general purpose bit for just about anything that you want to cut. When would you want to use a four flute bit? Well, in this case, you would think that the more flutes there are, the more cutting capacity you have, the faster you can move, and the easier it's going to be to whittle away at that material with the subtractive manufacturing process. Generally speaking, that's true. However, there's a downside of multiple flutes or the larger number of flutes. That downside is the more flutes you have, the more material that you are removing, but the harder it is to evacuate that material you're removing from the cutting cavity. 
With a two flute end mill, you can remove the material more effectively because there's fewer flutes engaging with the material you're cutting and it allows for more time for those chips to evacuate the cavity. When you have a higher flute count, the air is constant contact of the flutes with the material and it gives less time for those particles to escape up the flutes and get out of your cutting material. So because of that, you actually have to cut a little bit slower and it actually generates a little bit more heat when you're cutting. Heat is the enemy of any cutter because it decreases the sharpness of your flutes and creates a more dull bit. So you want to avoid generating heat when you can. So when would you use a single flute cutter like this? Well, these cutters are specifically designed for plastics, HDPE and acrylic specifically. You want a cut pattern with plastic that removes as much material as you can, but also evacuates the chips as quickly as you can without generating any heat. So if you generate heat when you cut plastics, what can happen? The plastic will actually melt and stick to your bit, and that causes all sorts of delirious problems while you're cutting. It could be something as simple as the bit just getting gummed up, or it can actually cause your entire cut to fail, where the material that is stuck to the bit actually fuses to your material and causes some sort of catastrophic failure, or it might cause the bit to get caught and snap, which would be also a form of a catastrophic failure. And so single flute bits like this are ideal for soft plastics and acrylics, so the end mills that I've previously shown are these, and these are what is known as flat end mills. Why are they called flat end mills? Well, very simply because the bottom is flat. There are other configurations of end mills, very specifically a bull nose end mill, which has a round over. Now, I personally don't have any bull nose end mills. Really, the only time you want to use a bull nose end mill is when you're doing some 3D carving and you want a very smooth surface on a 3D geometry that happens to be wavy in all axes. And so I don't do a lot of that, so I don't have any of them. However, another variety of end mills that you might run across are the V bits or the V cutters, which is what I have right here. As you can see, they are shaped in the form of a V. They are different than a flat end mill because they come to a point on the cutters. Now, they still have some number of flutes. In this case, I happen to have two flutes on all of these cutters. There is no spiral to these flutes. Therefore, there is no notion of up cut or down cut for a V bit or a V cutter. Instead, what you have is the angle of the V cutter is the important component. In this particular case, I happen to have a 60 degree V bit, a 90 degree V bit, and a 45 degree bit. Now this particular bit is a quarter inch in diameter and these two are one half inch diameters. And I will tell you that my 60 degree bit half inch diameter bit is kind of my go-to V carving bit. I do have a 60 degree quarter inch bit, which is also useful to get into some very small tight corners and provide some precision. But generally speaking, this guy is my go-to for my V bit arsenal. There are some circumstances where I do want to remove a lot of material. So I do use this 90 degree V bit so we can get into a wider area, but cannot go as deep because the angle is a little bit wider. And if I do need to get into a very fine area and go deep, then I use this 45 degree bit This only in a quarter inch wide because it has that very fine angle here and it is very thin. It can get into the material and get very deep and still retain those fine features that you want to re reproduce while you're doing some V carving. With all of the bits that you use, you do want to consider the shank size of your bit because you need to match the collet size to the shank size of your bit. Now, in this case, I happen to have a quarter inch shank bit here and an eighth inch shank bit here. Now, you can see, obviously, the eighth inch bit is a half the size of the quarter inch bit. There are reasons that you want to choose one over the other. Obviously, a quarter inch shank bit is going to provide a much greater degree of stability for the bit while it's cutting because it has a lot more to attach to. However, you do not generally find really fine bit sizes in the larger shank size. That's where you would want to move to an eighth inch shank size. With the smaller shank sizes, you do get a variety of smaller bit sizes. In this case, I have an eighth inch bit with an eighth inch shank, a sixteenth inch bit 
with an eighth inch shank and a 32nd inch cutter with this eighth inch bit. And so these can be very useful if you want to get into some very tight corners and you want to reproduce some fine geometry without moving to the V cutters. My go-to bit for just about everything that I do is this eighth inch two flute 30 degree bit that does just an amazing job of cutting just about everything. And if I'm not using this two flute eighth inch bit, then I am most certainly using my two flute quarter inch bit. These two are absolutely my general purpose bits that I use for just about everything that I do. And I only branch out when I have some specialty material that I want to cut, or I'm looking for some sort of very specific cut pattern where I might use one of these smaller bits or that single flute bit that I talked about. So what I have here is a bit with a relatively short shank size and then a commensurate bit here with a much, much larger shank size. And so with the larger shank, what that allows you to do is cut deeper into your material and really get in there and remove material from a much deeper pocket. However, you never want to cut deeper than the length of your flutes because you don't want your shank rubbing up against your material when it doesn't have to. The last set of bits that I want to cover in this video series are what I would characterize as specialty bits. They're actually bits made for a router for more traditional woodworking, but I use them in my CNC nevertheless. And in this case, I have two separate bits that are very large compared to the other bits you've seen. And like I said, they're a little bit of specialty bits. So this one here specifically is a bowl creating bit. It is a bowl bit because it has this lovely round over here, but it has this nice flat space across the top and another round over. So what this allows you to do is create a very flat surface on a large area and get that nice swooping round over up to the walls of a bowl. So this bit, for example, which is one inch in diameter, will remove four times the material of a quarter inch bit, as you can see. So if you're looking to remove a lot of material, larger bits are the way to go. And certainly if you want to have that round over, it's the perfect orientation. If you want a nice crisp 90 degree wall, however, you might want to consider using this bit to remove most of the material and then come in with a quarter inch flat end mill and get that nice crisp corner around the edges. The other bit that I have in my arsenal here happens to be this full round over bit and you can see the radius goes all the way around. It does not have a flat surface like the bowl making bit. And so these are very useful for creating specialty curves and coves in wood or whatever material you're cutting. Now this bit I actually use for creating juice grooves in my cutting board. It is perfect for it. It is the exact diameter that I'm looking for and you can vary the depth depending on how much juice you want to gather. And so in this case I usually generally cut about a half the distance deep and all the way around the cutting board and just create that profile cut with this bit and it creates the perfect juice groove for my cutting boards. So that was the video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. It was also a lot of work to make. So if you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but please leave your comments down below and tell us why so that we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thanks so much for watching. If you have not already subscribed, please consider doing so ringing that bell, very important these days, and don't forget to be inspired. So the upside of an up-cutting down bit, <clears throat> up-cutting down bit, that's funny. <laughs> now the upside of an up, whoops. <laughs>